Book One, Chapter Five. A blind date turns into double the trouble when you run into Mark and Amy. Chapter Five, Five Do's and Don'ts of Double Dating. Now playing as Danny, you're getting ready for the blind date that Brooke set up when you hear a knock on the door. Amy, what are you doing here? Danny, we need to talk. Don't think I don't know what you're planning with that brunch. I should let her inside. You should come in. This isn't a conversation for the hallway. Army Amy marches by you. So, uh, what brings you to the neighborhood? You know why I'm here. Look, Amy, I I can explain. We were just thinking of what was best for you and Mark. I didn't expect. Suddenly, Amy turns and throws her arms around you. This I did not expect. I know yesterday was just a big scheme to make peace, but I had so much fun. I really meant it when I said I wanted to start over, and to prove it, I was thinking we could all hang out tonight. You know, you, me, me, and Mark. I can't. Ah,、oh, why not? Because I have a date. Just then, you hear another knock on the door. You open it to find a muscular man in a tight tank top. Sup? I'm Brock. You must be Danny. Yes, Brock. Perfect timing. Come on in. Sorry, Amy. I can't hang out because I have a date. You know the guy Brooks set me up with. Oh, that's right. O M G! I had, I just had the best idea ever. We can go on a double date. I mean, if that works for you two. I don't want to impose. Well, you make eye contact with Brock while Amy waits for his answer. I should shake my head. No. Uh, problem. <laughs> yeah, no problem at all. Amy turns to you, and Brock gives you a thumbs up behind her back. Okay, thanks a lot, Brock. Yay! This worked out perfectly, didn't it, Danny? So perfect. Before you know it, you, Brock, and Amy are outside Maven Lusk, an upscale restaurant in Hayes Valley, waiting for Mark. Amy, Danny, guy I've never seen before. Amy, I thought it was just going to be you and me tonight. I know. I wanted it to be a surprise. You're always saying how I don't try hard enough with your friends. This is me trying. Great. Uh, Danny, can I talk to you privately? Why do you need to talk to her? Brock steps right in front of Mark, looking him up and down. You put a hand on Brock's shoulder. It's okay. We just need to talk about. Cole's hamster. Cole doesn't have a hamster. Not yet, but he's、uh, planning to get one, and we're trying to find a way to talk him out of it. Yeah, Danny's the only one who can talk sense into him. They literally just met. True, but they just have one of those instant connections, you know. Amy eyes the two of you suspiciously. Go on, we'll meet you two inside. This should only take a minute. I had a hamster once, tiny Pookie. He was just the cutest little thing. Okay, now I like you a little more. I'm sure Amy would love to hear all about Pookie. Brock and Amy head inside, leaving you and Mark alone. Danny, what did you do? Why does Amy think we're all besties? I was going to break up with her tonight. Seriously.
good, that means I can help you. And make sure you don't chicken out. Hey! Oh, you know you need the backup. How many times did you try to break up with her in college? This is different. This time we're going to break up for good. You and Mark head over to the table where Brock and Amy are already deep in conversation. About Pookie? So when I say seaweed is the new superfood, you know I know what I'm talking about. Oh look, there's Mark and Danny. Sorry about that. As you peruse the menu, you notice Brock pull out a thermos. He pull pours beige liquid into one of the fancy wine glasses on the table. Uh, Brock, what are you... what is... what? Oh, sorry, did you want some? It's my special recipe protein smoothie. Only two carbs. Tempting, but I think I'll stick to the menu. Oh, you shouldn't even be looking at that page. Those salads are full of hidden calories. The croutons alone are like five carbs. And don't even get me started on the dressing. I mean, that's true. But you don't have to say that. Brock reaches over and flips your menu for you. You should go for something protein-packed, like the steak, and you definitely want to substitute the mashed potatoes for a different side. I'm pretty sure Danny can order her own food. I think it's sweet. He's just giving Danny some dieting advice. She might learn a thing or two from him. Why don't you two date? I feel like you would get along. A waiter comes by to take your orders. I'll have uh, I mean I usually don't order salad at fancy restaurants anyways, so I'm I'm gonna make my date happy and hopefully not cause any waves so that Mark can break up with Amy. So the ribeye steak, no mashed potatoes. Nice order. I'll have the same. I do like steak. And maybe they'll give me some of those, um, baked beans. I like baked beans. Oh, good. He approves. Or mushrooms. Those are so good. You smile at Brock. I couldn't let advice like that go to waste. You clearly know what you're talking about. You run your fingers along Brock's forearm feeling his muscles flex under your touch. So, Brock, what do you do for a living? Psh, my job is boring. Brooke must have told you that my real passion is fitness. We can tell. This is ridiculous. Mark, just buy it. It's okay, dude. If you just worked a little harder at the gym, I bet you you could boost your MMP in no time. MMP? Oh, sorry. That's gym lingo for muscle mass percentage. Yeah, Mark. Don't you know that super common acronym? You could stand a little more gym time too, Danny. I can tell just by looking at you that you need to work on your cardio. Really? I mean, there's no harm in, like... Maybe it's not appropriate for, like, a first date, but... It's not necessarily an insult. Yeah, it's like the sixth sense I have, or whatever. You look like you spend a little too much time in front of the computer, if you know what I mean. Seriously? Are you seriously doing this right now? I mean, I usually stick to weightlifting, obviously. But even I could outpace you in a head-to-head -head foot race. It's just science. Okay, yeah. Less appropriate. You're on. It's a com. Uh, you're that kind of person. It's a common thing with women. They never. Wait, what? Let's face. After dinner. Unless you're scared. By the way, I love how she's still wearing this sparkly dress. I don't want to humiliate you in front of your friends. Oh, we don't mind. Amy and I can be race officials. We can? Looks like everyone is in except for you, Brocco. 
What do you say? Let's do this. Later, the four of you start the walk to, to a nearby park for the race. Mark hangs back to talk to you. Danny, I'm all for you showing up that guy, but are you sure you're ready for this? You're not exactly dressed for a foot race. It's fine. I think I have some workout clothes in my car that will make winning this race a snap. You carry workout clothes around with you now? This I'd love to see. You would? I mean, I'd love to see you beat Brock, not love to see your workout outfit. Which is not to say you don't look good in tight clothes. I'm sure you look amazing. I'm literally wearing a form-fitting dress with, like, cutouts. I never said they were tight clothes. You were just picturing that in your mind. Mark clears his throat, blushing. I'm going to shut up now. Yeah. And besides, even if I have to wear my re regular clothes, I'm sure there's still a way to beat Brock. Probably. You reach your car and pop open the trunk, looking for something to wear. Oh, what about this? Yeah, that could work. Seriously? I'm not buying workout clothes. No. This is not an everyday outfit. Again. Fine. No luck. Looks like I'll be running in my street clothes. Can I at least change to something more appropriate? Are you sure? I don't want anyone to think I have an unfair advantage over you. Well, other than my superior physique, of, of course. It's fine. Hold on. I'm going to check my closet. Outfits. Casual. Yeah, I'm going to wear this so I look less weird. Cool. Okay, now I look all tough. It's fine. Unprepared, you decided to bring street clothes to a foot race. This is your last chance to change your outfit before the race. Tap the closet button to change. Yeah, I did that. Well, actually, let me check out the other options. Hold on. So, that was casual. Special? Uh, yeah, the other one's better. Yeah. Oh, okay, this is... Fancy, they're just dresses. So I'm gonna stick with this. Okay. Let's do this. Yeah, you can totally run in this. At the park, you and Brock prepare to race. It's one lap around the path. Whoever gets back to me and Amy first wins. I can't believe you're making us do this, Danny. It's freezing out here. You're not the one that has to run. I hope you're ready to get destroyed. Oh, I'm ready for someone to get destroyed. Runners, take your marks. Get set. And go. You take off down the path, keeping in step with Brock. Whoa, fast start. You ain't seen nothing yet. You round the first corner. Suddenly, a dog walker steps into the path with a yapping puppy. I should dodge. Coming through. You jump to the side, narrowly avoiding the dog walker and the puppy. Whoa, watch out. You look over your shoulder to see Brock entangled in the puppy's leash. Yow! Aw, cute. Get out of my way. Come on, Danny, you can do it. You hear Mark's voice from the other side of the park. You keep pushing hard. Up ahead, you see a fallen tree branch in your path. I should jump. You leap over the tree branch, clearing the top in a single bound. Woo! You don't miss a beat as you keep sprinting down the path. You round the last corner and spot Brock still within your reach. Did he pass me? Can't let him win. 
Up ahead, you spot some wet cement. You look for another route, but the fastest path leads right to a couple having a romantic picnic in the moonlight. Um. Yeah, sorry. You charge right through the couple's picnic. Sorry, sorry, I'll be gone for you before you even know it. Hey! Have a nice dinner! You quickly reach the other side of the blanket and continue on. You're neck and neck with Brock as you fin approach the finish line. You pump your arms and legs harder, feeling the adrenaline coursing through your body. You're going down. You lean forward as you cross the finish line. And the winner is Danny. You beat Brock at his own game. No! Mark sweeps you off up in a big hug, lifting you off your feet. Mark, you need to control yourself. Your girlfriend's right here. You did it! Brock hunches over next to you, breathing heavily. I can't believe I lost to someone in street clothes. Maybe I don't know as much about fitness as I thought. Well, at least you're willing to admit that. And maybe you shouldn't tell people that you can tell they're out of shape just by looking at them. Yeah, that too. Ugh, gross. Danny, your clothes are all dirty and sweaty. Totally worth it. I'll say. Wow, Mark, tell us how you really feel. Amy turns to you. Is this your strategy to steal my boyfriend? Huh. <sighs> Amy, I'm not trying to steal him. How can you even say that? Well, it sure seems like you are. Amy, come on, I don't know what to say at this point. How many times do I have to tell you there's nothing to be jealous of? How many, t how many times are you going to choose her over me? Look, Amy, we aren't in college anymore, and honestly, I'm not interested in dating 20-year-old Amy. I wouldn't mind. Either you grow up and trust me, or we can't be together anymore. I... I don't think I can. Then we can't be together. I... I can't believe it. You're really breaking up with me? You step away to give Mark and Amy a moment of privacy, and Brock follows you. So... Can I call you later? This was a great workout. Are you asking me to exercise with you or go on another date? Which one of those would be a yes? Neither. Ha! You thought I was serious? I was just joking. Aw, oh, come on, Brock. You're not that bad. Just don't say things like this. Unless you change your mind. Then for real, call me. Good night, Brock. Brock turns and leaves. After a few minutes, you spot Amy leaving, too. You rejoin Mark. So you and Amy are broken up. You're better off. How can she still not trust you? You're you. You two have been together for years. She's the worst. Thanks, Danny. I think I'm going to head home. I'm not really up for more hanging out tonight. But can you, uh, spread the word for me? You got it. And Mark, Amy is stupid for letting you get away. Thanks. Later that night, you meet up with the rest of the gang at the Double Tap. And then they actually did it. They actually broke up. I don't believe it. Ding dong, the witch is dead. Come on, Cole, that's an insult to witches everywhere. Was it incredible? I can't believe I missed their big breakup. Cole? I mean, I'm obviously very sad for Mark, but think about it. We never have to see Amy again. Their breakup was... sad, actually. I never really liked Amy, but they'd been together for so long, and she still couldn't trust him. It's kind of tragic. Yeah, I know how you feel. Hey, Danny. This guy ro named Ray was asking for you. He said he helped you with an article in New York. That's weird. The only Ray I know is the guy I wrote about for my article. 
the worst day ever. Oh, jeez. Did he look like that guy, do guy over there? It's gonna be him. Ray is here? Well... <laughs> Did you actually use his name in the article? Because that'd be terrible. Next time on Love Hacks. Serena, you're gonna have to provide a distraction. What? Like start a riot? <laughs> what? No, I mean, like start flirting or something. How is flirting going to start a riot? Be sure to check out chapter 6. Six things only country fans will understand. Wow, they actually broke up.